The Moonman A1 was first introduced in 2022 and it's offered in a variety of finishes. The one shown here is blue with chrome accents and it has a clip. This is a retractable fountain pen that shares many similarities with the Pilot Vanishing Point, And we'll take a look at a direct comparison of those two models in just a moment. At the bottom, we have a long chrome button that extends and retracts the nib, followed by a little chrome ring that transitions to the barrel. The barrel is divided into two pieces that's separated with a chrome ring that has some ornate pattern. At the bottom of the top barrel, we have the words Moon Man and nothing on the back. And the barrel does have a gradual taper up to the top where there's a little step down to another chrome piece that holds the nib. The clip is not spring-loaded, but it is functional, and it has a little pinch section to help with holding the pen. In the hand, the pen feels very similar to the Pilot Vanishing Point. It is a little bit on the heavy side as it's mostly made out of brass. To extend the nib, you push on this back button. Pushing down on the button lowers a flap and extends the nib. The nib is an extra fine stainless steel, and at the time of recording this video, that is the only nib offering. To bring the nib back into the body of the pen, push the button, the nib extends a little bit further, and then travels back into the pen, and that flap follows the nib back. In terms of size comparisons, here you have the Moonman A1, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. At the beginning of this video, I alluded to there being multiple versions of the Moonman A1. This one that we looked at is blue with a clip. They also make one that's clipless, and that's this that we have here. This one is in matte black. You can see they removed the clip from the front barrel, and then the back barrel they introduced a small roll stop. The other big change between this and the one with the clip is the center band. Here, the center band has kind of a neural pattern, whereas the one with the clip has a bunch of circles with a little minus symbol inside them. It's also important to note, if you get other colors, the um, trim is also accented with chrome. Here we have the Pilot Vanishing Point alongside both versions of the Moonman A1. And you can see these three models have more in common than they have differences. The overall size and dimensions of the pen, as well as the way that they function, is virtually identical. Um, the largest differences here, we have obviously the Moonman being offered without a clip. That's a pretty large difference. The finish of the Moonman is a little more glossy than the stealth black version of the Pilot Vanishing Point and the um, center band of the Pilot Vanishing Point has those two polished rings, which is different than either version of the Moonman A1. Removing the back barrels, we do see a few design features that are a little bit different between these models. The Moonman spring is a lot stiffer than the Pilot, and what that results in is um, when you're not applying any force, the notch that goes into the slot stands proud of the slot. That does make it a little bit more difficult to assemble. Whereas Pilot has it tuned in pretty nicely where that notch sits right into that slot. The other thing to note is the barrel split for the Pilot is symmetrical. You have a ring on each side, whereas for Moon Man, it is asymmetrically split. Looking at the nib units, they are all virtually identical uh, with a few small differences. Of course, the Pilot has an 18 karat gold nib that's offered in many different sizes. The Moon Man is only offered in extra fine and it's a stainless steel nib. But the size and the shape of the nibs are identical, as are the feeds. The nib is held to the feed by four little ears that are the same on both of these. Uh, working your way up to the metal portion of the nib units, Pilot has a little bit of a shinier finish and also the placement of these little notches that hold the unit together is a little more consistent on the pilot than on the moon man we'll take a look at the filling mechanism in a little bit but i just wanted to give you an idea of uh, how these pens compare and to illustrate how interchangeable they are i'm going to take the pilot nib unit i'm going to put it into a moon man a1 
uh, with the clip. And on the back, I'll grab the pilot back and screw that in. So yes, this all screws together and the pen is fully functional. Pretty wild. Okay, disassembling the Moon Man A1. The two barrels unscrew from each other. The back barrel has the knocking mechanism and just like the pilot vanishing point, that's very difficult to take apart. So I would leave this one as is. The nib pulls out of the front barrel and the front barrel does have a spring. I'll show you a trick to take that spring out in just a second. And then we have the nib unit. The feed is very fragile on this. I would not recommend taking the nib off of that feed. So I would just leave this as is. But in the back, we do have the converter that can be pulled right out. Now, if you want to take out the spring, you can actually insert the converter into this barrel, push down until you hear a little pop, and then the spring should travel up with the converter. Um, that is a trick that I figured out just for the A1. It does not unfortunately work with the pilot vanishing point. Lastly, we have this converter. This is a pretty interesting converter. It actually more resembles the Pilot Con 50 than the Con 40, which came with the Pilot Vanishing Point. And I'll link a video to um, the little review I have about the Con 40 design. This, unlike the Con 40, does disassemble easily. You unscrew the sleeve from the back and the whole piston pulls right out. At this point, we have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll take our converter and slide the piston in into the sleeve and give it a little twist. Now, the piston does fully function. Um, and then one other thing before we put that back on that I wanted to draw your attention to I'm going to add some LED lighting so you can see down this. Nib unit. So if you look down the nib unit, there is a rounded flange, which matches uh, the flange that's on every pilot section. Moonman could have improved on the design by changing the feed to allow this unit to accept a more standard converter. But like I mentioned, they did improve on the converter that comes with the pilot vanishing point. And they were nice enough to include a little accessory pouch for other ways to fill up the pen. Um, they included a little pipet as well as an empty cartridge with a cap so you could fill this up and keep it on the go. And that cartridge also has the same sleeve that helps prevent uh, damage from the knocking mechanism. Continuing with reassembly, the converter slides into the nib unit and then we're going to take the spring and drop that down the front barrel followed by the nib unit as i previously mentioned the spring is a little bit stiff so in order to get this notch to not line up with the slot i push it down and then i'll use one finger to hold it in place while i grab the back unit and screw that together at this point, we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Moon Man A1, we're gonna unscrew the back, take out the nib unit, then take your uh, converter and twist it all the way down. Here I'm using Waterman Intense Black. This is to stay consistent with what I had inked up on the Pilot Vanishing Point. Submerge the nib. Actually, I'm going to put it on its an angle so I can try and get a deep fill. Again, um, the inlet for the ink is all the way at the back of this feed, so that's a pretty far way that we have to submerge the nib. And then we're going to just screw it back up. As with most piston fillers, I do this twice in order to try and get a full fill. 
wipe away the excess ink. Looks like about a half fill. Um, one trick that I've seen is if you hold the nib up and uh, give it a few taps to try and get the ink down and then turn the converter carefully to bring ink up the feed. And we'll just keep turning until we start seeing ink come out right here. That looks pretty good. Now I'll submerge the pen again and bring the converter back up. That looks like a pretty good full fill. Um, that method certainly works. It's not for the faint of heart. If you're in a rush, you're not going to be able to do that. You have to have the patience to be able to get um, the ink to come up without spilling all over the place. So I'll go ahead and cap that ink. Place the NIMBY unit back into the body of the pen. And screw the back on. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Moonman A1. This is the clip less version. And it has a stainless steel extra fine nib. As far as steel nibs go, this one is fairly smooth um, and it actually is pretty thick for an Eastern pen. Most Eastern nibs are much thinner than this, especially for extra fine. I would say this is closer to a Western fine. Our ink. That was a little bit of a hard start. Waterman. Tense black. As for flex, you really don't get any. Um, this is as close to a nail of a pen as I, I've seen. And for reverse writing, pretty unusable. You can see the um, majority of writing was washed out completely. The R didn't really come through either. So I would not consider this a good reverse writer. Now let's take a look at how this compares with the Pilot Vanishing Point. I'll write it right up here. Already the Pilot um, has much better ink flow and uh, the smoothness of the nib is really uncomparable. The Pilot is far more smooth. Um, and that's largely because you have this fantastic 18 karat uh, fine nib. Ink is of course the same. As for flex, you actually squeeze out a very minute amount of line variation, but you can if you really push it. And for reverse writing, it's a little scratchy, it's dry. Um, towards the end, that T was getting washed out, but it's nowhere near as poor as the Moon Man was. So what do I think of the Moon Man A1? Well, to be honest, I do have some issues with the clip version. I feel like this is walking a fine line between being 
a unique fountain pen and being a flat out knockoff of the vanishing point. But the clipless version, I think, holds its own. Um, there are quite a few people I know of that are afraid of taking the plunge and buying a vanishing point because of the placement of that clip. And I was one of them. Um, I originally ordered this blue as a clipless model and the seller made a mistake and sent me the clip version. And then I reordered it and got the clipless version. But having spent some time with the clip version made me interested enough to buy the Pilot Vanishing Point. I found the clip um, does take some getting used to, but it gives you a nice anchor for holding the pen in the right position and orientation. Um, and you kind of learn to work with it. In terms of ergonomics, both of these have the same issues. The, um, the barrel is very blocky and it has this sharp step down. I would have rather had an actual taper down to a point so you have a little bit of more variation in how you hold the pen. Um, but I actually find myself preferring the clip more than the clipless version in the hand. Uh, the reason that I find myself preferring it is twofold. First of all, um, the nib is pretty hard to see and I will find myself often writing in the wrong orientation. So that clip does give you a good anchor for orientation. Um, the other issue that I have with the implementation of this design is I find this pen to be a really good note taker and one that I'd like to use on the go, but because they decided to add a roll stop instead of just changing the location of the clip, I can't put this in any pen sleeves. I have to either put it in a pocket or put it in a, a pen pouch. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but besides that, I do think that there is value in having no clip near the front. And the only other thing that I wish Moonman would have done differently on this is change up the nib unit so that it's not stuck using pilot proprietary cartridges and converters, but something that's more international standard style. So I'd be interested to see maybe down the road pilot will take a page out of Moonman's book and make a clipless version of the vanishing point. But time will only tell. So that just leaves me to say, thank you for watching.